we're not using tool radius compensation, you now have the ability to set the engage angle when roughing to define a lead in approach move. When using tool radius compensation, the lead in parameter replaces engage angle to replicate the same functionality. This enhancement allows for smoother chip formation and lower cutting forces. Now in this particular example, if I navigate to the part view, we can see we have a range of pre-created features. If we look at the first feature, we can see we're doing a simple roughing operation. We have no tool nose radius compensation switched on. And going to the turning attributes page, everything's been left at default in order to replicate old functionality. So I'm just going to play through the tool path using the centerline simulation. What we can see, the tool rapids to a distance from the part equal to the clearance. We then engage onto the part at an angle of zero degrees. We then perform the rest of the tool path, withdrawing at the length and angle specified within the feature. Switching on the next feature, what we can see is we've used our new parameter engage angle and set this to 15 degrees. Playing through the tool path, we see the tool rapids to a same distance away from the part equal to the clearance. We then engage this time at 15 degrees into material. We then follow the tool path scan lines like so. I'm going to switch on the next feature. The only change we've made to this feature is an increased engage angle at 60 degrees. Again playing through we can see the effect of increasing the engage angle. Now zooming into the in engage region what I'm going to do is just draw a few lines. Firstly a line along our current engage angle. I'm just going to select that line and what we can see the angle is at 60 degrees what we set. So that is good and as expected. So I'm just going to play through the toolpath one more time to get that up on screen. Now selecting the same first point and then choosing the point where the rapid move meets the feed move and selecting that line. In this case we've got an angle of 64.6 degrees. So if we were to increase our engage angle beyond the point where the rapid and feed rate move meet one another, it will automatically be reduced to this point here. So what I'm going to do is just delete those two lines and switch on the next feature, which does have a higher engage angle. And we can see in this case that's been set to 75 degrees. Playing through the toolpath, we can see something like so. And again, if I just draw some lines over the existing toolpath and then select the line, we can see once again our value of 64.6. Um, so, despite setting an engage angle of 75 degrees, uh, the engage angle has been lowered to our value of 64.6, and that's so that we actually maintain our clearance distance from the part. As our final feature, going into the strategy page first of all, we can see we've switched on tool nose radius compensation. Going to our turning attributes, we no longer have an engage angle, but instead we have a lead in angle. So in this case we've set that to 15 degrees. We can OK and play through the toolpath and we see this time we're leading in or engaging material at 15 degrees. So when we're using tool nose radius compensation the lead in parameter simply replaces the engage angle to replicate the same functionality. And we can see this verified by switching on both of the features which have firstly an engage angle of 15 degrees and the second one a lead in angle of 15 degrees. We've specified a clearance for the first toolpath of 3 millimeters and a distance to lead in of 3 millimeters 
for our toolpath with tool nose radius compensation switched on. So playing through both of these, we can see the toolpaths are identical as the two are overlaid like so.